Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna start working on the WRX. Now, I didn't actually plan on filming this portion because I'm going to be replacing the wheel bearing. And all I'll pretty much be doing there is removing the whole hub assembly, taking it down to a shop, having them press in a new bearing, and then putting it all back together. So it's pretty straightforward stuff and I'm kind of more excited for what's gonna happen in a few days when Asus and I are gonna get together and work on the engine and get her running really well. But the reason why I decided to pull out the camera today is, well, let me just show you guys. Here is the front driver's side wheel. And what's so crazy to me is, look at this, I have adjustable camber. That wheel bearing is so bad. It moves side to side every which way. I knew the wheel bearing needed to be replaced, but yeah, I'm kind of uh, shocked at how bad that is. All right, now the wheel's off. Oh, that is not, oh, that's cool. That is the axle nut that is nice and loose. I did not expect the axle nut to be loose like that. I'm guessing either someone was in here doing work, like maybe they attempted to replace the wheel bearing or either because this has so much play in it that maybe that caused it to come loose. You would think that it would cause other things to come loose too, because like the crash bolts and stuff like that, those things are nice and snug. Kind of confused on that one as well. It kind of is what it is at this point though. So to take off the whole uh, spindle or hub assembly, um, I got a couple crash bolts. I have a lower ball joint right here that I have to remove. Of course the brakes, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Like this thing is just so disintegrated. And then look at, you can see all the ball bearings there. I took my gloves off, so I don't want to touch it directly, but there is <laughs> that what's left of the bearing. And then right here is the other half of the freaking bearing right there, man. Here is the good news and everything. I actually did have concerns that the wheel bearing was so bad and there was so much play, it could have actually messed up the hub itself, but it looks like it's in good shape. So cleaning it up and then putting the new bearing in and should be good to go. I got the whole spindle out over there. As I'm kind of looking around, I think these are actually lowering springs. Based off the green tint there, it makes me kind of think that they may be like Tane or something like that, but I'm not certain. They kind of look black up there. But anyways, this car is lower than stock, that's for sure. Everything else is pretty much kind of how I expected. It's nice and worn. I probably shouldn't say nice, but everything is kind of worn. Luckily, nothing is like catastrophically bad. Considering the whole wheel bearing was in such rough shape, I kind of expected other things to be messed up but nothing really is the only thing that kind of came as a shock was that i think earlier i said that all the bolts were tight uh that's actually wrong all of the bolts were super loose which is not really any surprise because that had to have been vibrating everything really bad and the wheel bearing was in such rough shape that it honestly could have caused an accident that was that was very very dangerous luckily though we are going to be breathing new life into this car and uh it's going to be a lot of fun i did make a little bit of a mess right behind me so i'm going to go clean that up and call it a day we will pick this back up again in a few days when me and Asus have time to finally work on that engine. Hey everyone, it's been a few days since the last time I filmed and I've been doing some stuff off camera to the WRX. The first thing I did was I got the wheel bearing pressed in and everything put back together there. So there's no more slop. Biggest thing I did though was I came in and I cleaned the interior. It looks so much better now. I'm actually trying to air it out, but that door doesn't stay open. That's okay. But yeah, it looks a lot better. The interior was pretty dirty and I have to give a huge shout out to my girlfriend because she helped me clean it and I don't really like cleaning specifically cars it's just not my thing and uh, she was able to pick up my slack which i greatly appreciate the outside of the car still has to be done jesus is actually on his way over with the pressure washer and that should hopefully help us get this stuff off because this gunk is really built up on there while i wait for jesus to show up i'm going to go ahead and change out the oil and put the new fuel filter in and aside from those things that i just mentioned we have to do the timing belt and this car is ready for daily driving until spring which is when we're going to start doing the rally cross events we'll just be driving it around town before I could get started on the fuel filter, Jesus happened to show up. You have to see the work that Amy and I did. It was mainly Amy though. Jesus Christ. I know, doesn't that look amazing? 
This looks really good. If I didn't know any better, you took a picture of this, you'd be like, oh yeah, they clean this like at like a, you know, like a detail shop or you took it like to uh or like they're detailing it to sell like at a car dealership. Yeah. Cause that's a really big difference. And I don't think we mentioned it, but Jesus is going to park his Miata for the winter. So that means he's actually going to be daily driving the WRX until springtime. I think he owe Amy a coffee. Yeah, I can live with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had plans to watch the outside of the Subaru today, but Jesus forgot the wand to the power washer. So he's going to run home real quick and hopefully it's, well, it is there. Will you do that? I will do the oil change and fuel filter. Those mm -hmm. should take me like 10 minutes. By the time you get back, I think we'll be ready to clean the outside. It looks like the fuel filter should be pretty easy to take off. I just have to unclip this. And then I got the two hoses here or fuel lines that I have to unscrew. And then on the back side, there is a little clamp that I undo. Normally I would actually pull the EFI fuse and turn the vehicle over to like suck up all the gas and like use it up. That way no fluid comes out when I do this. I just like to minimize my chance of fires. I already emptied out the gas tank and I don't really want to suck more bad uh, gas into the engine. So I'm hoping that minimal fuel comes out. Last thing for us to do before cleaning is actually just changing out the oil. I do expect the oil is going to be actually in pretty good shape, mainly because when we got the car here, before turning it over, I did check the fluid level. It wasn't reading anything, so I kept adding oil and adding oil until it finally showed something. And when it was all said and done, I put about three quarts of oil in and I looked up the capacity for this car. It's about five quarts. So most of it was gone. Don't know where it went. My only guess is that because this thing does leak oil, it just kind of started seeping out over time. Don't know for for certainty. I feel confident in saying it's not a head gasket problem yet. And I only say yet because it's a Subaru and you know how everyone always say the head gaskets blow on them. But regardless, I'm actually pretty hopeful about this car because for those like 30 seconds that I did have it running, it ran pretty good considering, you know, it was on a year old plus gas or gas that was at least a year old. I think we're on to our favorite thing and that's actually power washing cars. It's very satisfying to see the grime come off and we're only gonna power wash today because we're honestly feeling lazy and we don't feel like doing the full wash. I feel like we just weren't meant to wash the WRX today and let me show you why. The hose to the uh, pressure washer sprung a leak. At the very least though, we got the interior so we can just get the exterior another day. I think the big question is, do you wanna go drive it? We have the car insured, it's registered, it's legal, man. Take it around the block? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, we're gonna go take it around the block. This will be our maiden voyage with the car we have to put in the battery but other than that she should be good we are going to start the subaru up this is going to watch for leaks while i'm inside turning it on this is sweet of course the emergency lights are on maybe i am really confused because the emergency lights are on the switch isn't operating them whatever we can address that down the road we'll still start her up I'll give her a bit of gas. Oh yeah. She starts right up, man. She runs actually a lot better now that we have the uh, fresh gas in there. How's it look? Huh? Any leaks? Not what I can see. We aren't finding any leaks besides on the passenger side valve cover. Most of it's dissipated already, but there's a little bit of smoke because the valve cover right here was leaking onto the hot exhaust. Other than that though, it sounds like it pretty much should and what we would expect. Yeah. Uh, a little bit rough, but I think plugs and a few other minor maintenance things, and she's gonna be good. It's so weird though, this doesn't work. Oh shit. Oh, it worked. Hey guys, Jesus is a genius. I was pressing the wrong thing. What were you pressing? I was pressing this little button, which... That's parking lights? Oh! I was pressing the wrong thing. I'm an idiot. Thank you for, for um, catching that. So, there's nothing wrong with the e-brakes. I just don't know, or the emergency lights. I just don't know how to work them. Happens to the best of us, it's okay. Yes, yes it does. All right, here's the maiden voyage on this bad boy. Oh, the clock is gone. <laughs> Well, the AC totally works. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, it just wasn't on. The button wasn't on. This is the first run of her on the straight. Um, it's literally 20 seconds in and the check engine light's already on. So that's very Subaru-like from what I've been told. I'm not an expert on these, but as soon as uh, a lot of my buddies and stuff found out that Jesus and I picked up the Subaru, 
Um, I immediately started getting jokes about wait till it breaks down, um, your cars always break down, and you're gonna blow the head gasket. And I'm a head gasket expert at this point. <laughs> um, ooh, turbo noises. Oh, this is sweet. Oh, yes. I can get used to this actually. You know, the lowering springs actually don't feel that bad on this car, or at least I think they're lowering springs, because uh, I don't think these are that low from stock. Yeah, we'll, we'll know once we come up on the road. Oh, right yeah. Right up here, because right up here it gets really rough. Eh. Oh, yeah. This isn't bad. Um, she's not catching on fire yet, so that's a good sign. We're on gravel, or like rocks and stuff, so this is pretty much a Subaru's natural habitat, right? This doesn't feel all that different from like stock suspension. I'll be honest, it's actually pretty comfortable. What are your first thoughts, Asus? The clutch is way heavier than I was expecting because in the Miata, uh, the clutch is really light. You know, it's interesting you say that because to me, I actually thought the clutch was going to be heavier. If that makes sense? So kind of the opposite thing to you. Uh, um, and I thought it was really light and maybe there was air in the system, but again, that could just be the clutch. So yeah. there's not necessarily an issue. To be fair, the, the clutch in the MR2, to me at least it's pretty heavy so um yeah i actually well yeah yeah no it's it's stiff the v6 mr2 has a very 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 stiff clutch you know what we do need though <laughs> oh there we could hear the turbo noises yeah. oh that's no, the plastic yeah. oh you're fine okay. um there's plastic under trays which are like half torn on this car and uh, we haven't taken them off but once we put the skid plate on that's going to fix that it needs an alignment but honestly she runs really good yeah. like i'm i'm happy with her yeah, I could. I have. I have no major complaints. Like it runs good. It sounds good. I mean, yeah, yeah it's there's good. the plastic tray, but that's a negligible thing. I know she's not perfect, but I. I really think this was a very good buy, which is kind of hard to say. Mainly because I am the opposite of a Seuss, and I tend to buy piles of crap that. Oh, and it's smoking. Oh, that's nice. It's out the valve cover, so we knew that would yeah. happen. Yeah, it's the valve cover again, the, the oil that got dropped. We are not really gonna drive the car anymore, mainly because we really need to fix the whole, you know, valve cover leaking issue. But also we wanted to do the timing belt because the previous owner told us that it had been about seven years since uh, he did it, because he did it when he first got the car. And I actually took the timing cover off because I wanted to inspect and it looks like it's actually in decent shape, but being seven years old, I don't want to play with that. So we're gonna replace it before his suit starts daily driving it. Here's actually the other positive note, other than the smoke, which we can Ignore. It's not leaking like any fluids because you know we just replaced the fuel filter. I drained the gas tank and did some other minor things. It's gonna be a really fun car. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. You know what's wild to me is that pretty sure that's a stock turbo. Literally at like 2,500 RPM, you can hear turbo noises. You've never heard turbo noises out of this. Okay, so you actually have a very good point because you would never really suspect that this car was turbo. And the only thing I can think of is that the 33, I guess is more of a GT, Grand Touring car. Would that be the right way to put it? Yeah. And so maybe it was more luxurious? Yeah, so when they actually did the redesign from the 32 to 33, they designed it to be slightly yeah, more GT and family oriented. So it's, in general, it's a lot softer than the R32, which people would say is a very raw car. I think it's safe to say Jesus and I are both pretty satisfied with this car. And you know, actually the just last thought on it is I was really surprised by how responsive it was. Cause even though I didn't give it the beans, you know, I was just driving it there and back or down the road and back. I could actually feel the low end torque, which really, really shocked me. So I don't know if that has to do with the turbo setup because I think it's a stock turbo, but someone has been in the car and has messed with it. It's very, very clear and evident. So I, I don't know if also that's just maybe a stock characteristic where they have good low-end torque because neither of us mm -hmm. actually have experience with WRXs or Subarus or boxers in general. This is my first time ever actually like being in a Subaru so yeah yeah we're, we're even though we live in the Pacific Northwest we're not uh, Subaru kids we're not the outdoorsy well, type right? Oh definitely not no, <laughs> no, no. But, <laughs> but I can say I'm a Subaru kid now because this has convinced me it's made me a believer. That's pretty much all we got for today. Timing belt hopefully in the next few weeks we're gonna clean the outside because lord knows it needs it. We could barely see as we were driving. That's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. You got anything else? No, it's gonna be a great car though. Yes it will and I guess we'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>